Welcome to the Dr. Leadership Show, where we take a look at how you approach your work and personal life and how we can make the most out of both of them. A weekly get-together where we get real about self-improvement and development as we all make this not-so-easy journey through life. Our discussions will cover ideas and concepts from how to grow your career to how to lead your family towards prosperity and happiness. We don't pretend to know it all, and the doctor is the first to be vulnerable, discussing his own weaknesses, both past and present. This is about growing together and having some fun while we discuss what is happening in the crazy world we live in and how to make the most of it. Let's strive for awesome together. Let's get after it. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Dr. Leadership Podcast. Hope you're having an awesome day. Hope you had a wonderful holiday. You know, Thanksgiving uh, time just came and went. I can't believe another Thanksgiving's down. Hope you had an awesome, awesome holiday. I know I did. Everything except uh, the, the bad cold that I was given by somebody at a meeting a week before last. Guy sits next to me, coughing and sputtering. Yeah, I got a bad cold. Hey, man, uh, you know, thanks for coming. I <laughs> uh, just got back from the doctor a little bit ago to get a, a steroid shot in the bum and uh, waiting for my antibiotics to be called in. So if I sputter a little bit here, I'm doing okay, but I travel again this week and uh, do not want to get on airplanes with uh, sinus infection and all that. I'm, I'm coming out of it, but uh, uh, I'm on day 10. I figured I'd, I've manned up long enough uh, to be able to go in and see the doctor real quick and, and uh, like I said, hit me in the, in the tailpipe with a, uh, a steroid shot and uh, now waiting for the antibiotics to be done. But anyway, back to the Thanksgiving holiday. Hope you had a great, great holiday. As I said, I did. Before we jump in here today and talk about Thanksgiving a little bit, I want to remind everybody that uh, great interviews out on the website. Remember, you can subscribe. Go out to www.drleadershipresults.com. Click the subscribe button. Go out. Click on it, man. Five bucks a month. Some great content. Not because it's me on one end of the mic. It's the people on the other end of the mic that you get to listen to and learn from. We're getting ready for those... uh, Uh, New Year's resolutions again, which I hate setting a time to start a goal versus finish a goal, but we are here again. And every year, including last year, I'm sure you said, you know, I'm going to do something for self-development and you haven't clicked the button yet. So go out and click the button. Thanks. Had a couple, a couple, three people in the last couple of weeks join up. Very much appreciated. If you got any content ideas, you got something specifically you want me to talk about. You just have uh, hey, uh, DL, uh, Dr. L, I think you suck or Dr. L, great job. Reach out via the email. That's at drleadershipresults at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you there as well. Now, this episode you're listening to, the week after Thanksgiving, next week, I'm dropping the Toby Stansel interview for the public on Wednesday morning. I'm buying myself a little time. I've got a couple of conflicts this week, so I'm not going to be able to record up as easily. So I'm dropping the Toby interview uh, a week from today for the weekly content. Give you a taste of what goes on out on the, um, uh, on the subscribe site. Uh, and Toby Stansel is an absolute awesome guy. CEO of the Cargo Agency, has been a motivational speaker, gentleman uh, from the South, just a great guy, great storyteller. We've talked about that in the past. Give it a listen next week. It's the type of content you can get. You also get early access to upcoming episodes, so uh, I hope you check it out. But anyway, back to the holiday here. As I said, had a wonderful holiday. My family was together. My youngest daughter had flown up from Charlotte. Uh, big news. She brought a boyfriend. Oh, boy. Yeah. Liked him. Dan, good guy. Uh, but, boy, they're bringing boyfriends. Oh, my goodness. Life is changing. Um, you know, did a good job, Dan. Like I said, don't screw it up. Uh, but she came up, just flew back here a little while ago. I'm recording this on Saturday. After the big Hawkeye win yesterday, just finished watching uh, the Michigan Ohio State game. The Hawkeyes will take on Michigan and Indianapolis next week. I hope we can stay in the building, but uh, been a been a proud year for the Hawkeyes. Uh, I'm very very proud of them. The other person that came and was a part of this was my oldest daughter. She's here. Um, my mom was here. 94 year old, the matriarch of the family. That's what's so good about Thanksgiving is you get all the different generations together. Just makes my juices flow. Makes me a, a lot of listening. I think uh, hopefully a lot of people did a lot of listening. My uh, oldest sister was here with us. My um, brother-in-law, her husband was here. And of course, my wonderful and amazing uh, love of my life wife uh, was present as well. We had a great time. Great time. Food was good. Everything was good. Except we, we had some adventure. 
And I want, and I'm tying this together. So this episode, I'm talking about. Um, uh, it's a week later. Are you still thankful? And the reason I'm calling it that is a couple of things. One is I talked about New Year's resolutions just a minute ago, and how they come and go. January first, New Year's resolutions raring to go. About March first, can't go for raring anymore, and the resolutions fall apart. The way this world is today. We all need to be thankful for the little things. You need to still be thankful a week after Thanksgiving. I'm going to tell you a little story about our Thanksgiving here. And it's a true story. The names haven't even been changed to, uh, to protect the guilty. As we finished cooking the meal, now I, I'm, I'm the cook. <coughs> Excuse me. That may happen a couple times. I told you I gave you a warning. I apologize. I'm not even going to edit it out this week so you know that I'm playing hurt. <laughs> so anyway, I do the cooking. Uh, my wife does the clean and does a wonderful job. Uh, works hard every single day. I don't mind cooking. Um, it's just what I do. And uh, I love entertaining and having the family over. It's why we built the house. Everything was great. So as we finished cooking the meal up, I, I did a beef tenderloin. I did the turkey, did a beef tenderloin, did some homemade uh, sausage stuffing, did some mashed potatoes, some homemade gravy, some cranberry sauce. My sister brought over uh, the green bean casserole, made a wonderful salad, just bread rolls, and then I made a couple of homemade pumpkin pies. Uh, everybody killed it. At least I was told so. And um, anyway, so it, the other thing I made was a beef tenderloin. And how I like to do it is you take a cast iron skillet, you get that sucker just scalding hot, and you sear a little bit of olive oil on the bottom. You sear it on all uh, six sides, all four sides of the tenderloin, then each end, get those juices to hold in. Then you pop it in one of the ovens, at 500 degrees for about 30 minutes. And um, went a little long, and I'll tell you, you'll understand why in a minute. So it was a little bit more done than I would have liked. It was still nice and medium in the middle, but I would have liked a medium rare in the middle and then medium out on the edges. But uh, everybody, it's all gone. So evidently it was enjoyed. But as I pulled that beef, opened up the oven to pull the beef tenderloin out at the 30 minute mark, a quick billow of smoke, poof, came out and immediately set off the fire alarms in the house. And the next thing you know, wing, wing, everything's going off in the whole house. We're trying to open doors, everything else. Um, I didn't burn it, but the olive oil is not the best choice for high heat in the oven. And don't believe what Google tells you, friends, because I'm standing in the grocery store on Tuesday. And I was like, okay, it's always been a little smoky when I use good virgin olive oil, extra virgin olive oil. Let me see if there's something else. And I look and it says peanut oil. Well, I don't know about allergies and people. I, I just kind of gives me the heebie-jeebies to cook with peanut oil with the severe allergies of that. So I'm, it says olive oil. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to go for it again. And lo and behold, um, don't believe what you what you see on TV or read on Google, folks. Uh, that's what Abe Lincoln says anyway. And um, so it wasn't burnt, but the oil, it, it's just not the best choice. So when I opened up, <laughs> opened up the door, um, the billow of smoke went up in a kind of a hallway that's off the kitchen there, and there's a smoke detector right there, and man, the rest is history. All alarms were going off crazy. Um, you know, the detectors opened up all the doors, reset the alarm uh, a couple times. Next five minutes, I shut the door real quick because of the billow of smoke, and then I'm running around trying to get all this stuff set, and that's why I went a little long on the beef tenderloin, about three minutes too long. And uh, I turned off the alarm, the house alarm, because we have a simpli uh, Simply Safe. If, by the way, put it all in myself, they're not even paying me for the ad. Great system. But after about five minutes, I, I look down and I see I missed a phone call from the alarm monitoring company. So running around, pulling the tenderloin out, starting to cut the tenderloin up. And I look down and go, uh oh, that's an 855 number. That's probably an alarm, com alarm company. I didn't realize that they call again. And I, uh, so I didn't realize that they called, they call again. I start interacting with their automated system. Now the alarms are still going ring, ring, because we can't get enough air in this back hallway to clear this alarm out. I got the garage door being fanned by one daughter. My brother-in-law's got the patio door open. Things are going crazy. So, um, this automated system keeps saying, hello, this is simply safe. If you would, hello, this is because every time I'd start to ask me for a response, the alarm's going off and people are laughing and yelling in the background. And it thinks I'm giving a response. It doesn't understand me. just keeps me in this death loop. And, um, you know, I hate automated systems. Let's just go down a road here for a second. Spend enough money. Keep your, keep your SG&A expenses in line enough as an organization. Answer the damn phone and customer service. 
Don't use these automated systems. Good God, AI, automated systems, fake videos. It's just, come on, man, get the people skills going again. The world needs it. So someday I'll do an episode on, on automatic systems. So I, I finally realized I better call the alarm company because they did try to call. So I call them and they say, oh, we dispatched the fire department. We called you twice. Um, and, uh, you know, the automated system, it didn't, it didn't work. And I says, yeah, I need to talk to you about that. Because when the alarm's going off and you're standing there uh, under it, and it's a false alarm, your automated system, when it's waiting to hear a voice, that keeps resetting it. So I didn't have a chance. I needed to run outside, I guess, to do it. And I said, can you please call the fire department back off? She goes, no problems. I'll cancel the call. So she did. And I'm like, whew, thank goodness. So we proceed to do the next very important thing in our Thanksgiving traditions here at the Taylor household. And what we do is we stand around, um, we, we kind of do it buffet style because if you, you know, these pictures with the turkey and all the fixings and everything on the table, when you got 10, 10 people in the room, the table's got to be, you know, six foot wide and 16 feet long to hold all this food. So we do it kind of buffet style, right? You put out the hot pads, put all the food up on the big, uh, on the big island in the kitchen. Then everybody takes over and we got bread and butter and salt shakers and all that kind of stuff, all the condiments that everybody wants on the table, water glasses, wine glasses, etc. So we, um, we hold hands around kind of the food on the island and we do a prayer and all of us list five things we are thankful for. And if you get to go last, you're kind of hosed because all the stuff's been used up. And if you get to go first, you're a little bit on your heels. But I really love this because first of all, you're, you're, you're talking to your family. It's a moment of vulnerability. But I listed, you know, my five and I listed my family, my health, my country. I'm very thankful. It's the greatest country in the world. we got a lot of broken pieces right now. we got a lot of people in this country that don't love it. Pack up and get the hell out, please. Oh, my God. These, oh, my God. Don't even get me started. Someday when I'm not working in corporate America any longer, I'll tell you what I really feel about some of these things. Right now I'm playing a, playing a little don't lose my cool game here. But I talked about my family, my health, the greatest country in the world called out by name, my mother. And then I said, and first responders in our military, the people that aren't able to be home um, uh, this time of year. And then we moved on and everybody went around and did it. Lots of good things. You know, my sister, thankful for modern medicine and thankful for great in-laws and thankful for um, the safety uh, of, uh, of others as they're, uh, we're traveling around, other family members getting to, the, to their parties and such. But then I went into the prayer, and I thank Jesus, of course. And again, I ask for protection of the first responders, fire, EMT, police, and military. And we start to serve the food, and the doorbell rings. And I look up, and there's two big firemen standing there. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, no, damn. So I answer, and I apologize. Oh, guys, I'm sur sure sorry, man. I Beef tenderloin opened up, poof. big. You know, I give them the whole story. Guys stand there, half their garb on the big big uh, alarm trucks out in front of the house. I'm looking to see if the neighbors are looking. A little bit embarrassed and everything. <coughs> and I said, uh, I called the alarm company, and they said that they canceled the call. So I, I'm sorry you, you didn't get the call. And he goes, no, no, we got the cancellation. And I said, well, what do you mean you got the cancellation? And this is true. The next five, six, seven minutes, I'm going to tell you are true. He said, yeah, it was canceled. And I said, well, why are you here? He said, well, we saw it was you. I said, what do you mean? He said, well, we saw it was the Taylors. And we wanted to make sure you were okay. And I was like, huh. And he goes, um, you guys deliver food to us. Yeah, we do. My wife is a wonderful person, and, and my wife, for the last two and a half years since we've lived here, we've delivered many of large sweet rolls, trays of cookies. See, the fire departments literally go out of our subdivision. You take a left, and you go about six blocks down the right, brand new fire station there. And we pull in, and um, we'll drop off. You know, we have a barbecue. We have leftover burgers and stuff. We've probably done it five or six times. And the first time we did it, they asked us what our name was. My wife and I are standing there. And they go, oh, it doesn't matter. And they go, no, we'd like your name. The guy's standing there with a notepad. And I'm like, well, they think we're going to poison them or something? You know, why, why do they want our name? And he writes it down. 
what's your address? I told him. He said, okay, thanks. We really appreciate it. Great. So about a week later, uh, um, an envelope comes in the mail, official looking. It's got the fire department seal on the back of it. And we open it up, and it's a thank you note from the fire chief of that squad. And it said, thanks for truly caring. Thanks for being thankful. One time we delivered, so I kind of finish up with the story. It's the little things that matter, everybody. That's what I'm, trying. I'm not saying this because I want you to think I'm awesome or my wife's awesome. I'm just I'm setting up how if we let life be awesome, if we let relationships be incredible, if we care for one another without strings attached, if you truly are thankful in life, good things are going to happen to you. So see, we had delivered food to this fire station probably four or five times. And my wife and I are like talking, going, well, you know, there's another fire station just a mile down the road off to the right. Maybe we ought to deliver something to them too. And we kind of laughed and said, what if those guys are off one weekend? <laughs> we need both trucks. You know, what if it's a bad fire? And we kind of chuckled. So she goes to me, it's me. And she says, uh, take these sweet rolls or cinnamon rolls, excuse me, great big breakfast cinnamon rolls, whole big plate of them, big tin of them, probably 16 inches across, covered with icing. Man, they were good. It was hard to get all the way there without, you know, taking a little driver's piece out of it. So I went driving down and I went to the, uh, to the other local station. Thought we'd spread the love, right? And this station has in the back a four or five story tower that's uh, like replicates an apartment building. And there's um, uh, a big cement area and there's hydrants and they practice back here. So I pull up and I go to the front door and I can see through the front door, the doors are open, I can see in the back and there's a truck hosing a fire on this practice building and all the guys are in their getup. Nobody answers the door. I ring the doorbell. It's a secure entrance all the time. And I can see through the glass building, through the hallway, past the living quarters, and I see them in the back. I'm like, oh, good God. Now I got to go walk back around the building and I'm starting to feel uncomfortable um, going, now I got to walk up there with these damn sweet rolls. So I go walking back to the parking lot around the side of the building, go around to the back, and there's like four or five guys standing there on the back of the truck. And I'm walking, I got this big platter, and they look up and they go, it's Mr. Taylor. <laughs> I kid you not. And like six guys come running over, and one of them that says it's Mr. Taylor is from the other one, the, the fire station we always give the food to. And they're down there practicing with the other group half and half groups. And then they were going to switch in the afternoon. I come to find out. And there's three guys from the fire station that we haven't delivered to before. And they go, Mr. Taylor, you rock. We are so sick and tired of hearing about these guys getting cookies and big cinnamon rolls from you and Mrs. Taylor all the time. We can't believe you brought us some. And I'm like, well, I was trying to avoid giving it to them because they're getting a little spoiled up there, you know, giving them shit. It was just a hysterical moment. And they took the cinnamon rolls and life was grand. <coughs> Excuse me. Steroids haven't kicked in yet. So I am sitting here on my front porch and the fireman says, yeah, they canceled the call, but we saw it was you because they wrote down the address. They evidently kept us somehow in a list or they've talked about it or something, knew the tailors. It's a new subdivision. It probably came up. They, who knows? They might've put a friggin' star on our house on the map. I don't know. But I got two guys standing there saying, it was canceled. We're close. We wanted to make sure you're okay. I said, I'm great. I'm great. Think about that for a minute. A dozen cookies, a big cinnamon roll, a heartfelt thanks, an unrequired or requested just thoughtful thing that my wife did that I got sucked into. Let's, let's state it how it happened. And now I'm standing here and two guys that would risk their life for me are saying it didn't matter that the security company called them back. They just wanted to make sure that we were okay. The sad thing I learned is that lots of people say they are thankful 
but don't really ever ever show it when I'm sitting there thinking, you know, I'm going, it was a big week. Everyone's thankful. Everyone probably did a prayer, right? I mean, everybody really means it. And then suddenly it's Friday and the football games are on. Hawks win. Woo. And then it's Saturday and you're two days away. And are you really still thankful? Are you living your life like you're thankful? So here we are that week later. And I want to know, are you really thankful? Or do you just dress up for special occasions? I'm not talking at you or picking on anybody here. I'm looking for self-reflection from all of us here. Because that's what I did. Do you cherish Jesus On days other than Easter and Christmas? Do you use a servant's attitude in leadership or in business or in being a neighbor all of the time? Or just when the reminder on the calendar hits you? Or just when you think others are looking? See, in life there's this incredible word called integrity. And the basics of integrity is you do it when people aren't looking. When someone's not keeping score, are you scoring points in the thankful portion of life? Are you scoring points in the appreciative part of life? Are you scoring points in the servant's approach to leadership or servant's approach to guidance? Are you practicing what you preach? Is it a a truly leaning in event that you're doing on this thing? Or are you just going through the motions when you're supposed to go through the motions? I get back to the the New Year's resolutions. Why in the hell are you waiting until January 1st? Start today. What's important to you? What isn't going right? Too busy? You procrastinator? As I always say, I'm a procrastinator, and tomorrow I'll tell you why. Or are you someone that's going to really, really say, and I'm not perfect at this. I'm talking to myself here. Are we people that really need to lean in and go, I'm going to be that way all the time? My wife is very consistent. My mother is very consistent. My sisters are very, very consistent. My kids do a good job. I do an okay job. We all need to do better. But are you really, really thankful for the right things too? Do you cherish being thankful when you don't need to be thankful in front of others? Do you have integrity? So be thankful every single day and show it. Be loud and proud about this stuff. That's what I want to talk about. Just be loud and proud. How do you show it? Little things. I got a couple ideas. Say thanks. A lot. Hold the door open for others when you're leaving the convenience store after you hop in to grab a soda or a pop, whatever your uh, geographic nomenclature is for that uh, sugary um, drink is. Hold the door for them. And when someone holds the door for you coming in and out, big pet peeve of mine. I don't do it for the thank you, but you better say thank you. You aren't special, just someone was being nice to you. The other thing I want to talk about is be thankful for intangible things. It's okay to be thankful about things, but don't don't lead with that. Sometimes when you have people, hey, list what you're thankful for, and they go, I'm thankful for my big house. No, man, you're thankful for shelter. I'm thankful uh, I live on the beach. Well, you're fortunate you live on the beach. I'm thankful for my health. I'm thankful for my family. I'm thankful for our country. I'm thankful for our military, our first responders, your family, your neighbors. Don't be thankful for your car. I'm thankful I got a new car. Yeah, that's okay, I guess, but I think you're missing the point of what I'm trying to lay down here. Be pure in your heart. Be about the small things. Be about the smile, the hug, the tears of joy, the embrace during sorrow. 
Modern medicine, my sister said. That one struck home. I'm not getting any younger. My wife lost a dear, dear friend to brain cancer earlier this year. I've got a a dear friend over in Europe that's dying of cancer too. The big C word, right? I mean, everyone's facing it. Be thankful for modern medicine. Hopefully it's getting better all the time. I've talked about dementia and memory issues. I'm really thankful that medicine continues to go after that. I'm thankful for those that help the hungry. I'm thankful for mission trips and for churches that give back to society. I'm thankful for people that give to others without expecting in return. I'm thankful for people of integrity that do it when no one's watching. I'm thankful for all of you that allow me time to try to spread words of encouragement, words of um, inspiration, funny stories that allow me to try to share my attitudes toward life. I don't have them all. I haven't learned them all yet. Everything I talk about, I've learned a hard lesson to get my mind right about it. Remember, I don't have this all right. This isn't about me talking about I'm great, be like me. This is like, let me help you out. Don't wait as long as I did to do some of these things. The reward in your heart is worth so much more than any tangible item. Did you give of your time this year? Remember, you don't have to give treasure. Remember we had the whole philanthropic episode 30 episodes ago probably. Brenna Fennerty came on and talked about all of the great philanthropic things she did. Another great interview on the Leadership Lounge. Go out and subscribe and check it out. But you can give any of the three T's. Treasure is money, but you can also give time and talent, something you do well. Or just give your time to help do things. My daughters went over and packed Thanksgiving meals at church Wednesday evening for those that are less fortunate. I saw somebody uh, gave 250 turkeys in the news. My wife and I are ringing the bell for the Salvation Army at the local grocery store every Saturday. It takes zero effort. And you know what we get out of it? Pleasurable interaction with four or 500 people in two hours every Saturday. It's a bit nippy. You ring a bell, you stand there, you say, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Thanksgiving. How are you doing? We comment on every person coming in with their favorite team shirts on, right? How about those Hawks? Go Cyclones. How about those Eagles? How about those Bears? Go Packers. You start a conversation with them. Some people are bah humbug. That's okay. I try to force them into engagement. Then there's other people that stop and smile and talk. You know what happened last week? Ringing the bell. A couple comes up and they go, thank you so much. They throw a fiver in. And we're talking. Where are you guys from? Where do you live? Oh, wow, wow. We're talking. About five, six minutes in, the girl goes, what's your name? I said, Brent Taylor. She goes, I knew it was you. It's Deb Woodard. I haven't seen her in 40 years. I went to high school with her. She takes her sunglasses off. I'm like, holy cow. I can't believe this. She goes, I can't believe this either. Now, we live clear across town from where we grew up. What's the likelihood of that? Evidently pretty damn high. Started with a hello. How are you? Her husband had on a Coastal Carolina shirt. And I said, well, you're a long way from home. He goes, no, I live here. We got a daughter down there. I said, oh, I had a daughter went to Eastern Carolina, ECU. And another daughter went, was a 49ers at uh, UNC Charlotte. That's how it all started. Next thing you know, reconnection. Someone I haven't seen in almost 40 years. I was thankful for that interaction. I was thankful to be able to give some of my time. We always leave a little bit of treasure. My talent, my wife's talent, is we engage people very easily. We're both in leadership. We're both in sales. Sales, excuse me. We interact for a living. That's what caused that to happen. Say hello to a stranger. Talk to somebody pumping gas. Make a joke with somebody standing in line at the convenience store. So if you didn't give your time, give your talent. If you didn't give your talent, give your treasure. If you can't give talent or treasure, give your time. Or if you don't have any talent, ring the bell for the Salvation Army. Deliver a plate of cookies to the fire department. 
buy a cop a cup of coffee next time you see somebody. If you see somebody parked writing up a report and you're in the Starbucks, buy an extra black cup of joe and take it out to the police officer. He or she may not make it home tonight for you and me. That's what you're thankful for. Buy a soldier a lunch at the airport. I try to do this every time when I was still drinking. A lot of times you find the soldiers on the way back to the to the to the, to the rougher side of life, sitting in the the bar at the airport. I picked up a lot of tabs uh, uh, anonymously. My wife and I, uh, about five years ago, said we're going to go to Cracker Barrel every Sunday for a couple months, and we're going to look around the room and we're going to pick up the tab of somebody that looks like they might need help in some manner. A couple of times it was parents with just multiple kids going, oh my God. And all you do is you just tap the waitress and go, give me the check. It's 50 bucks to empower those people with a belief in humanity again. It doesn't have to be expensive. Pay it forward at the coffee shop. Like I said, as you're in the drive-thru, I'd like the person behind me too. It's time for our society to take our communities back. It's time to be thankful every single day and every interaction. That's what it's going to take to heal this world. So I ask you, it's a week later, are you still thankful? Don't be the mouth of thanks, but be the heart of thanks. Be a servant to your community. Be a friend. Donate in some manner. Tis the season. And then... Celebrate the season 365. Want to feel good? Do gift bags. Another great idea, my wife. She went and she got Ziploc bags, the big freezer type. In it, small bottle of water, two things of crackers, a peanut butter deal, um, uh, like a pack of gum, toothbrush, toothpaste, small deodorant, zip them up. She puts 20 in the back seat of her car, drives around. You see homeless people on the freeway exits sitting at the corner. Instead of handing them a fiver, instead of handing them a fiver, I reach in the back, and we need to do this again, grab a bag, hand them a bag. Watch their eyes light up. They look at it and go, holy cow. We call them gift bags. Be a gift to somebody. Be awesome to somebody. Talk next week. <laughs>